Thank, thank, thank you so much, Ajay. Thank you, Dr. Moj. Thank you, Bansi and the rest of the team. Uh, nothing new, cardiovascular disease risk factors in diabetes. Uh, you need to understand that uh, a lot of metabolic abnormalities in our patients with diabetes drive cardiovascular disease. Unfortunately, 25% of the world's population is there in South Asia. But 60% of the world's heart disease comes from here. And majority is coming from this lower income countries like India and the rest of the world, though we are developing quite a bit. Now, what are the challenges? As I said, that 60% of the world's heart disease is here. High incidence of atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease. Premature diagnosis of diabetes and premature diagnosis of cardiovascular disease as well. And how do we take care of cardiovascular disease? The most common cause of uh, NCD death, 80% of a cardiovascular disease is from the low and middle income data. CVD is the most prevalent cause of healthcare cost among people with diabetes. Excess morbidity and mortality and cardiovascular disease go hand in hand. What is different in, in South Asians? What is different is that the, the, the preponderance of risk factors which we may call as metabolic risk factors are more so in South Asians as compared to Caucasian. Cardiovascular disease is higher in, in people from South Asia. NCDs like cancer seems to be higher in the whites as compared to uh, the South Asians. And cardiovascular disease occurs probably around a decade which is higher uh, earlier than our white match counterparts. And a lot of higher uh, incidence in the ethnic groups as well. If you look at all the cardiovascular risk factors in South Asia, very interesting to note that only LDL and hypertension have similar contribution. If you look at dysglycemia, HDL, we know from the interheart study, Salim, you study that almost 90% of us have some form of uh, Asian attributable factors where low HDL was the most common. Triglycerides, abdominal obesity, CRP, lipoprotein, small age, genetics, all the others which we take together. If you look at it, is that 10% of our population has diabetes, 25% of our population has hypertension, 80-85% of our population has dipsy, 30-35% of our population has high lipoprotein A, 8 out of 10 people have what we call as the Indian phenotype or the thin fat Indian. So almost 80 to 90 percent of our patients come to our clinic, which we call as garden variety, are already loaded with these risk factors. So it's important to note that these risk factors are there and sometimes we are not able to actually look at them closely. Not going into detail, but again, hyperinsulinemia, endogenous production of PLDL rich triglycerides, which then goes through uh, some amount of lipolysis and you get into small dense LDL. Then the increased non-esterified fatty acids which come into the liver, again causing an increase in, in the preponderance of triglyceride rich lipoproteins. All this put together make our atheroma formation earlier and premature. That is why these risk factors are more there and that's why we have more cardiovascular disease. Uh, as compared to others. Now, we know that hyperglycemia affects both micro and macrovascular complications, not getting into details of it. This is from the UK PDS study, and they had a multivariate COX analysis of approximately 3,500 people. They had 305 patients who had some amount of cardiovascular events. And what they showed is that these are all modifiable risk factors. Goal concept of modifiable risk factors came after the UK PDS where all these things you know to have certain certain non-modifiable risk factor like age sex being born with certain genes which are going to pull the trigger on you but modifiable risk factors of lipids uh, sugar blood pressure and smoking was first identified by the UK PDS by this uh, multi multivariate Cox analysis again this fantastic paper, which was in 2004, looked at 10 uh, uh, randomized control study. It was a meta-analysis. 10 randomized study. Look at the effects of HbA1c and cardiovascular disease. So this is something that most patients will ask us. And almost two decades back, this was there. For every 1% increase, there was an 18% increase in cardiovascular disease. UKPDS told us that for every 
1% drop, there was a non-significant 14% drop in cardiovascular disease. The post-trial data follow-up follow of UK 2008 further strengthened our belief that catch the patients young, aggressively risk manage all the cardiovascular risk factors. You may not get benefit during that phase, but you will get benefit over a period of time. Again, telling us that the legacy effect and the effect of hyperglycemia on atherosclerosis decades for a beneficial effect to come. The, the deleterious effect may come very, very early. Again, uh, the similar thing of association of glycemia with macro and microvascular complications. Again, heart failure was identified in almost 17% as being higher with every 1% rise right there and then in UK PDS when we didn't have studies on heart failure then. Again, the effects of tight glycemic control and 10 years after intensive therapy, which can we talk about the legacy uh, and the effect on the mitochondria, again, very well seen. This meta-analysis, again, published after those three accord, VADT and ADVANCE, based our eyebrows in 2007 and 8. This, this meta-analysis was purely done to actually cobweb from our mind whether good glycemic control could affect coronary events. And significantly, it does. There was a 14% reduction in non-fatal MI and a 17 reduction in fatal uh, cardiovascular disease based on this meta-analysis, which are almost 35,000 patients. Again, if you look at the diet in South Asians, and I was very happy to, to hear previous talk by Dr. Ashasha, which again spoke about diet in South Asia. For every 150 kilocalorie per person per day increase in sugar availability results in an absolute increase in diabetes prevalence by 1.1%. Refined carbohydrate also increase the risk of obesity, which we know. India is the largest consumer of refined sugar in the world. Around a decade and a half back, I had to make a presentation for the government uh, uh, sources and presentation was on milk-based uh, sweets and what is the what is market size and how is it increased. Very surprising that 15 years back, the milk-based sweet industry in India that was at a 20% rise every year. And when I say milk-based sweet, it's all our peda, burfi, all those things. It's not the confectionaries, not the bakery products. Milk-based sweet industry at a 20% rise every year. 50. I don't think that today it must be much much higher than what it was. So so there's a lot of large consumption of sweetened beverages. Low protein diet, we are we are very well aware, and again we are very well aware that that there is a very high carb intake. Physical activity is actually very under understood. There are not many studies other than the look ahead and also the 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 Tubingen family study, which was a very remarkable study. I don't have slides for it, but Tubingen family study was presented as a banting lecture six years back, and they looked at progression of people from pre-diabetes to diabetes and whether physical activity prevent progress. And what it showed is that physical activity could prevent progression only in the first three years. And later on it caught up. In, so it was an 8 to 10 year prospective study on patients with diabetes. The effect of exercise also wears off or probably the consumption of food again goes up. So amount of exercise which is required to cause a reduction in our visceral adiposity is very intensive, vigorous activity. So again, visceral adiposity, we know that when we say visceral adiposity, ectopic deposition of fat in organs where it should not be. So whether it's the, the, the depot around our liver, the depot around our kidney, depot in the pancreas or depot around the neck, these are the ectopic deposition of fat and that's why it leads to metabolic syndromes as such. Uh, we know that obesity is the mother of all these non-communicable disorders. And a lot of data to suggest that mortality increases with, uh, with obesity. And it's, this is more than a, 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 a decade-old data which speaks about visceral obesity. Again, hypertension. Hypertension is one of the most prevalent non-communicable diseases. Probably the most prevalent, the most dangerous as well. It's almost 26%. So almost two and a half times prevalence more than type 2 diabetes and seems again if you look at the prevalence in age group which is not which we call as young 20 to 44 is two times higher in our population compared to the US hypertension around 43 percent in the 
the high prevalence of hypertension with almost one in indian adults affected the prevalence of hypertension is really very very high unfortunately uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the risk factor profiling and risk factor medic hypertension not optimally done again we know that that systolic blood pressure the risk factor for cardiovascular disease this again the uh, 2009 paper on the benefit of intervention in people with diabetes if you look at it for intervention with for blood pressure seems to have a much much better impact in cardiovascular death as compared to ldl or hba1c so probably if you have a patient as a fantastic paper in jama published 4 years back which says that if you have a patient with blood pressure dyslipidemia and high blood glucose which would you treat first and uh, there was a debate also multiple times on and it's always hypertension because hypertension seems to more rapid a killer in the shorter time as compared to dyslipidemia or high hyperglycemia so again if you look at it the, even in patient diabetes that hypertension intervened earlier faster and have will have effect on our patient as i spoke about dyslipidemia the atherogenic dyslipidemia you are all aware of small dense ldl triglyceride there's a new entity called as a triglyceride glucose ratio uh, very good which has got a direct impact on insulin resistance a lot of data yesterday dr anup mishra has in his in his uh, publications uh, spoke about this new paper about triglyceride glucose ratio uh, and insulin resistance in people who take breakfast versus people and surprisingly people who don't take breakfast have a higher triglyceride glucose ratio saying that they are more insulin resistant and this was a retrospective data it's a korean data and then it said that they prospectively put those patients who do not eat breakfast to have breakfast over the next one and half years they saw their insulin resistance coming down so so again uh, very interesting to suggest that probably excess fasting we all somehow do and we were discussing just half an hour back about all those things and uh, they may actually is insulin resistant so all those uh, fats that we talk about uh, may may have uh, problems so in our patients with type 2 diabetes have a very abnormal lipid profile we are aware of this mild rise in ldl a higher hypertriglyceride which we call as atherogenic dyslipidemia can i go back to one paper of dr kk sethi almost 30 years back which looked at people with diabetes and what is the atherogenic dyslipid we have very similar and it was proposed 30 years back that low hdl slightly raised ldl and a higher triglyceride is the dyslipidemia which is atherogenic and which is what we see with type 2 diabetes i am going very fast so lowering ldl we know uh multifactorial steno was one of the best studies where they looked at uh, again the whole uh, multifactorial intervention and clearly showed but smaller study of 160 can showed that multifactorial intervention help uh, the steno risk engine fantastic if you don't use it please use it uh, again the paper from india about cure study again speaks about modification of five risk factors obesity physical activity diet triglyceride and hdl to actually prevent diabetes majority of your is dr mohan's publication These are the emerging risk factors which i don't i'm not getting in pro bnp has come in a very huge way not only in heart failure but again has a direct linear relation to mortality crp we know from the jupiter study that it identifies people at higher risk for cardiovascular disease jupiter was was one among them uh plasminogen activator any bit i'm not getting in details of it then when we choose the treatment for diabetes we get probably a treat which has a, a pill which has multifactorial dimension then probably a, a lot of sglt 2s metformin glp1 should come higher in our population if they can afford because that's how we can prevent complications summary i would say that endothelial dysfunction comes early naturally a lot of metabolic risk run cardiovascular disease and we are have prematurely factors hereditary roads are gun lifestyle pulls the trigger patients are at very high risk and a lot of additional risk factors are there in india thank you so much.